Hey guys, what's up? We're gonna do a little bit more dismantling today. I'm gonna take off um, these oil lines and uh, dis disconnect them all from the engine, etc. cetera. And uh, I'm gonna pull off, I forget what that's called. It's got this, this bracket here. Um, it's got a name, I can't remember what it's called, but I'm gonna pull that off the bike and uh, get some more stuff out of the way in preparation for dropping the engine. So let's put it on time lapse and get started. Folks, let's do a quick debrief. Uh, got the oil lines pulled off and removed from the engine, the swing arm, and we got that front bracket thingy removed. In the video, you're gonna see me use um, my uh, jack to brace up right there against the engine. That When I was pulling that bolt out, the uh, dog bone link, that guy right there started um, pulling away from the engine. I thought, holy cow, is that thing like preloaded or something? So um, just to be on the safe side, in case the engine wanted to move for some reason, I just put the jack underneath there and um, it was fine. It was just, uh, you know, false alarm. And I like, I don't mind false alarms. I don't want, I don't want real alarms. This thing is getting more and more bare as time goes on. Um, it's uh, coming along. So let me talk to you about this. Um, in the video from the time lapse, you might see me clipping these two wires. That is the, uh, it's coming off the voltage regulator, which is one of those Rick's hot shots right there. I highly recommend that voltage regulator. It does cost more money, but it is worth it. Do it. Um, big upgrade, that's MOSFET, so it never gets hot. So um, while we were, my brother and I were riding around last uh, summer on the Dragon, um, my battery died suddenly. And, and what's interesting is I didn't think to, the bike was acting weird a few times uh, while we were riding around um, our old running grounds when we grew up in Middle Tennessee around the Nashville area. And um, I thought, what in the world's going on here? It's kind of weird. Um, and check engine light was coming on and, and, but it wasn't throwing any codes. I was like, what the heck? I did not even think to check that, you know, maybe there was a charging issue because it wasn't acting like anything odd. There was just this check engine light that would come on around 70 miles an hour. And that's what was weird. It would only come on, come on around 70 miles an hour. Okay. So, um, got all the way. Had it come on several times uh, on the way to the Dragon, started smelling a burning smell, which we thought was a truck in front of us. It was not. The whole time, it was me. And we discovered the problem at the Dragon. Um, and uh, what had happened was the connector here, and I'll show you a picture of what that connector used to look like. That connector fried, obviously. And... Um, and so my battery was completely flat, bad. It was, it was a bad battery and um, it was an AGM. Uh, I forget the name of the brand. I got it off Amazon for like 60 bucks. It was just a, you know, it had high ratings, high reviews, lots of good reviews. Um, anyways, um, it was dead. And so what I think happened was um, while we were riding around that it was extremely hot in middle Tennessee that particular last year. Uh, that was, this would be summer of 2022. And so, um, July specifically. And so my theory is that, um, you know, the engine was running its fan nonstop, this cooling fan. It, it never didn't run. So, and that's what you wanted to do. You wanted to keep the rear cylinder as cool as possible. And so, um, 
I think it cooked the battery. And when it cooked the battery, the charging system went full chooch. And so it got hot down here at the weakest link. Thankfully it was here. And, and so um, got this thing reconnected, obviously not well, even though when I checked it at the Dragon getting it together, it definitely seemed well, it didn't pull apart. Well, I just pulled that thing right apart. So, hey, that's a good thing. We're gonna replace it with the right part and all that stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and um, slice back here and I'll end up re-wrapping this, probably put some nice loom around it um, and gonna splice in some fresh wire because this is fairly, it's very brittle and you don't wanna use brittle wire, right? It increases your resistance and it got brittle for a reason. Um, the regulator side is still pliable. Just so anyone's, in case anyone's wondering, that is very soft and pliable, no issues there. So it was the bike side. And then obviously that makes sense. This is the older, this is the older wire here, right? And uh, so, oh, by the way, the insulation kind of got cooked up in here too. So that's heat shrink that you see on there. That's why they're both black. They're not both black. One's red, one's, one's black. So anyways, um, that'll get replaced, you know, don't worry. And uh, the voltage output of the battery for the new battery was correct. Um, I also had, um, some of you are gonna be like, oh my gosh. So I did the same thing. I was like, oh crap. I hope I don't have a bad stator. I just, I tested the stator and it's definitely within spec. So um, moving on, this connector got hot on the exterior, but nothing on the interior, which is good. The wires are okay. It this got hot um, because of the other the other connector. You know, you can see from the photo I showed before, it's it was fried, and then this one too. So um, I'm gonna be obviously I ran the bike after I ran. You know, we got the bike patched up and uh, rode it around the dragon for the remainder of the time I was there, and rode it all the way back from. East Tennessee to Middle Tennessee without any further issues after doing that repair. No check engine light, nothing, batteries doing okay, etc. So, you know, whatever. Um, but I'm going to go just for peace of mind and to avoid all the YouTube comments about, oh, how could you put that back in there? I'm going to fix it. Don't worry. Um, I, I'll, I'll have a hard time doing it. It was a patch job to get me back home. So, Anyhow, um, all the uh, fittings uh, came loose pretty well. Um, not a big deal there. They're AN fittings, so um, pretty straightforward. Anyways, yeah, that's it, guys. I think we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. Um, I'm going to clean up some parts, uh, strip that bracket down, and uh, start cleaning up stuff over there and get, get it put into storage, uh, put the oil filter back on just so I don't have a, a non-stop drip. Um, and uh, plus it, it'll help protect any of those threads up here. These other parts here, obviously, you know, I can't do much about those, but all right, I think we're good. Y'all get the point. So thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, peace out. Keep it between the ditches.